Praise the Lord. It's my work from home. Wednesday and Thursday, thank God. Uh, my director gave me permission to work from home uh, today and tomorrow due to uh, doctor's appointments and, st and stuff at the VA. Um, sometimes we get in relationships and marriages with a man or a woman and it leaves us damaged after years and years of fighting and rigmarole and domestic violence prone episodes and yelling and screaming and cussing you know it, it it's just it, 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 it seems that we come out of the marriage or relationship but we don't come out unscathed a man or a woman can condition you in this thing called misery where you will be in a defensive posture or position for the rest of your natural born life. As soon as someone upsets you or says something uh, opposite or indifferent or, or even raise their voice a tad bit, you are going to be ready to absolutely destroy, fight, uh, push back against um you are, you are going to be compelled and propelled to defend yourself uh, at the highest level possible because the time you spent with this man or this woman, the time you spent being verbally abused, the time, the years you spent, not just weeks and months and days and hours, but years of being conditioned to be in a defensive posture. And this can carry over to your next marriage, your next relationship, your next bow, <laughs> your next boat, your next man, your next woman. This this can carry over, you know, and the carry over can carry on and on all oh, because see we have a miniature savior in our hearts and mind where we think we can help this man, we can help this woman. There's nothing like seeing someone changed and be rearranged and no longer deranged and no longer no longer estranged or strange. It it can carry over um into our spirit. It can carry over into our the seat of our emotions, which is our soul. And it can cause us to think that we can, hey, I can help this person. I can fix this person. But oftentimes this person we think we can help or fix is break fix. They break you, you try to fix them break fix they break you you try to fix them as I leave this alone <laughs> so I'm sitting here I have a a lot of friends and family who have been through this conditioned misery in a marriage or a relationship that you hold on we have expectant hope we have an expectation this person gonna change we we trick ourselves and deceive ourselves. We become numb in the process, not realizing we are in a conditioned misery. And this person leaves us with past pains, hmm, unmet needs, and unresolved issues. And then the physical contact, the neglect. You see, when a person doesn't appreciate you, and it becomes years and years of not being appreciated or years and years of neglect, Years and years of not being appreciated plus years and years of neglect equals resentment as I leave this be. And so we find ourselves hoping and begging and praying unto the most high God. And he's telling us, hey, this person is not going to change. How, how do we know when a person not going to change? How many years you been saying it? Are you keeping count? How many years have you been saying, please stop drinking, please stop cussing me out, please stop saying this, please stop being racist, please stop being bigoted, stop being bigoted, please stop saying this in front of my mom and dad, please talking about, please stop talking about my parents, please stop doing this in front of my friends, please, please, please. And, and, and hours, minutes turn into hours, hours turn into days, days turn into weeks, weeks turn into months, and months turn into years as I leave this beat. So we have to know that it's best to get out with a heart in peace. My mom and dad, you said it. Would you rather get out with a heart in peace? Or would you rather get out a heart with a heart in pieces? So we have to take an assessment. We have to take our own fetal position. We have to get ready for the, the tears and the tears, the tears, years, the fears of, of, of no change. Years of tears. Tears of tears and years of fears as I leave this piece. So we have to 
you know, take take our pain and fear the unknown, not knowing if we're going to make it, not knowing if they're going to make it. If they made it before they met you, they done made it mistreating you, they'll make it after you. They'll make it afterwards. They'll make it uh, forever and beyond, as I leave this be So be aware, beware, be smart, be wise, and be forgiving. And we all must understand and understand at the same time that Sometimes it's best, excuse me, all the times it's best to get out with a heart in peace, save your heart, because somebody else down the road will meet you in your heart, even in your uh, non-healed state. There's nothing like hanging in there with somebody, this is my point, that you've met who's been brutally abused, and you're there to pick them up and help them uh, put them back together again like Humpty Dumpty. If they had got Humpty Dumpty to the Most High God, God could have put Humpty Dumpty back together again with no problems. All the pieces. So sometimes we meet people who've been damaged, brutally, uh, verbalized, brutalized. And if we just hang in there with them, they will make us some of the best husbands and best wives and best friends and best mates and best spouses you can ever possibly find in this life. Pray for the person. Understand they've been mistreated and abused and brutalized. Their self-esteem is gone. They've been conditioned in misery. But also remember that if you are this victim as well, forgive the person, become a UFO of God, go upward, go forward, and go onward. More than anything, forgive and go forward. Try not to hold it against them. You need your heart for yourself. You need your heart and mind for yourself. You need your heart and mind for the next person that will treat you properly and that will treat you right. God bless you. Get out with a get out with a heart in peace. And don't get out with a heart in pieces. Let me get to work. Peace. One.